Well, Dr. John Taylor is with us here at the exhibition at the Manx Museum. I'm so glad to meet you, sir, because you I'm are pleasure. a living legend, and I really mean that. I mean, your life is just awesome. Um, but we're going to concentrate on this part of it, uh, to start with, certainly, your, your fascination for clocks. Yes. And it goes back a long way to your father. Absolutely, yes. Um, he could uh, turn his hand to anything, and one of the things he used to be put on was to uh, uh, somebody would have a clock which didn't work. And uh, they'd say it was after the war and there were nothing available. Oh, Eric, you, you can fix clocks. I have this favourite grandfather clock doesn't go. And so I'd end up seeing uh, with my nose up on the kitchen table, watching him uh, take this clock apart, put all the bits in egg yeah. cups and all the right order and then polish each bit and bad pieces with lot too much oil on. He'd actually boil and get it off, and then clean it afterwards, because of course there were no uh, technical cleaning things in those days. Yeah. And then uh, he'd put it all back together, and it would work. Oh. And, and that, that was the, uh, the creation of a sort of living, beating animal out of all these bits, I think that inspired me. Yes. And your inspiration was to collect clocks yourself then? Well, this is your collection, isn't it? Well, of course, in, in life, to collect things, you need three things. You need the time, you need the money, and you need the inclination. Normally, you've only got two or even one. Mm. And it's very rare. And so that I had to wait till I was sort of retired before uh, I had all three to start collecting. Are you fully retired, though? I believe you still... Always thinking up things, inventing things, or trying to come up with new ideas. Well, you you, you can't retire as an inventor because no. you're always thinking, oh, that could be improved. Oh, anything you pick up, I I look, how is it made? And yeah. it's sort of automatic, and it's sort of, it it comes right through to uh, always thinking, and uh, you can't stop. This exhibition, um, a lot of the pieces have been on display in, from Edinburgh, I believe, and you've had a big display there. Yes, and in London. Mm. Um, it, there's no good uh, hiding these wonderful things away. Um, they're here to be seen, I think, and there's a typical collection um, of 400-year-old clocks. 400? And yes. still, still and going? still ticking away, yeah. yes. Can I just talk about you for a minute? And of you, course. Obviously, my house has got one, I think, Two billion households in the world have a thermostat that has, uh, to thanks to you. Yes, in uh, Catholic, one of those, yes. was it was it was it one of those moments when you went, you came up with it, or, or was it a long process that came up with a thermostat as we know it in a kettle? Well, going right back to the beginning, um, when I was a young man, um, the top of your wedding present list was a Russell Hobbs electric kettle because <laughs> yes. it switched off. Yeah and they were kept in short supply and they were 20 pounds which was uh, a week's wage for a, um, a, a skilled craftsman in those days so they're very expensive and everybody told me that um, you couldn't make an automatic kettle because Russell Hobbs had got it patented up to the eyeballs and there was no way that you could break those patents so I thought well I'd rather be nice to read what it says <laughs> and uh, I found a way around it and so that, that allowed us then to make uh, kettle controls which switched off. And the rest and, is history? And the rest is history, yes. Can I ask you how you got around that patent by the way because I mean normally there's lawyers you know all over these sort of things. What That's happened? right, well you have to read a patent and generally it starts off with a description of what the invention is and then you end up with the claims and usually they follow each other and in the description it talked about a kettle control which switched off with it boiled and it had a manual indication of the position of the switch and it was resettable by hand. When it got to the claims it said exactly the same thing, resettable by hand and it added one word, only. So all I had to do was to make the dry switch on protector an automatic reset and it wasn't reset by hand, it was automatic. And then the visual indication of the state of the contacts, um, I left my switch stationary and I put a knee on in and that was, that was a, light, a light indication. Well, the lawyers physical. are going mad at this, I mean did it take a long time to, to get it? You know, saw it or was it? No, no, no. I went to see Bill Russell, oh. and you could see. <laughs> <him think. laughs> yes. You missed out. Yeah. How are Russell Hobbs doing these days with their kettles? 
Uh, they're very busy, yes. So they've still uh, got their, their mark? Yes. Um, You've got the rest no, no, of the world? No, 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 no. They still use uh, Are they using stri your... strict controls. So after all that, they came yes. in and used oh, yours? Yes, yes. Oh, brilliant. Yes. I didn't know that. So yeah. they, well, it they... saved two minutes on the production line, you see. So it's easy to buy yours and to continue with theirs? Well, it speeded the, uh, um, everything through. Mm. Uh, the production lines have got to flow and yeah. to stop and have a, a two-minute adjustment. Yeah. Um, it, it just doesn't work. I love it. You actually <laughs> outdid them on their own original idea. Yes. Okay. That's why you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's a quite incredible thing to come up with. It's like cat eyes or something like that, isn't it? It's one of those yes. things that uh, yeah. has changed the world. Yes. Well, of course, all the Russell Hobbs kettles were adjusted on the production line. And right. It took two minutes on each uh, cattle to set up the steam control and so on. Mm. And so that the... Uh, the change was to actually make a unit which was pre-calibrated so that a manufacturer could just screw it together and that was it. Do you want to be remembered for the, the kettle? <laughs> There's worse things to be remembered for. <laughs> How is life with you these days? Do you spend much time on the Isle of Man? Uh, oh, only about uh, 364 days. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I've, I've, uh, it's a wonderful place, the island. It's a wonderful place to come home to. It's a wonderful place to do visitors from. Mm -hmm. And uh, who would want to leave? <laughs>